Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to continue to work on our file driver. We have a lot to do, so let's get right to it. As I had mentioned before, we're going to extract an abstract class called driver. Every driver that we write for this package will have to adhere to this class. So let's start there. Simple enough. Let's go into our drivers directory and add a new class called driver and hit OK. Now, like I mentioned before, this is going to be an abstract class. Now, what is the very first thing that we can do? Well, for one, here's one thing. So we know that regardless of what driver we are using, there's always going to be a post variable. So it would be better if we're saving this as an overall variable for the entire operation. So let's add a new variable here, protected posts. We're going to write to this posts and here we're going to return this posts now what I'm going to do here is instead of defaulting it there I'm going to default it here so this post will always be an array and that's the nice thing here so now let's hook up driver to this extends driver perfect and now everything else should be working exactly the same. Let's make sure that's happening. My sample project, PHP, artisan, press, process. And sure enough, we're back to the same place we were before. All right, let's keep working this out. The next thing I want to do is this config here. So it kind of bugs me that we are fetching directly into a config file and we're looking for a path. And so we're going to work a little bit on this configuration and we're going to restructure this a little bit. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to make a new constructor for this class. I'm going to call a new method called setConfig. What setConfig is going to handle is making sure that it fetches the correct configuration for our current driver. Let me show you. Protected function setConfig. And so let's go back to my config file here really quick and do the change that I want to do. So this path, right? This path is only relevant if our driver is of type file, right? So if we're using any other type of driver, the path to a specific place where blogs are found is not relevant at all. So we're going to change this and we're going to make a new file config. So that way, when we choose the file driver, we're going to have a separate config just for file. And that's where we're going to put our path. So if we were to make a new driver and it's going to be a database driver, one of the things that we may have in there is maybe a table name, right? Does that make sense? So that, that's specific to the database driver. It is not relevant for the file driver. It is only relevant for that. Continuing with that, if we had a gist driver, the gist driver may have a source or sources and then that would equal to some sort of source. So if our driver is set to file, then we want to fetch this array. And if it's set to something else, such as database, then we want to fetch that array, or we want to fetch this array. So our abstract class should be able to fetch the appropriate sub array, or sub config for the currently set driver. Let's go back to my driver. So how do we set that? All right, well, let's add another protected, and we're going to call this config. And so we're going to set this config equals to, and we know we're going to have to reach into our config file somehow, right? And what we're looking for in this particular case is we're looking for something like press.file, where file is actually brought in from another config place. To start it off, we know we're going to reach into press, and it's going to be followed by a period. And then let's concatenate another config call. In this case, we're going to call press.driver. Does that make sense? So we're going to concatenate press and then a period, and then we're going to reach back into my config and grab press.driver. So what that looks like is press.driver is going to equal to file. So we're going to reach into press, which is this file, dot file, and that's going to return this. So that will set the appropriate sub configuration for each individual driver that we write. Now, if our users were to write a separate driver or a new driver for a package, 
they would just have to add that to their config file. And since the config file is actually stored in their local project, it wouldn't make a difference if we updated our package. So we're making good progress on making this really configurable for whoever decides to use it. The next thing I want to tackle is a little bit of validation or some sort of source check that a user can tap into this driver and validate whether the current driver is properly set up or is able to fetch data that it needs. So I'm going to add another method here, validate source. Let's add another protected function, validate source. Now I'm just going to return true here. This of course is going to get overwritten um, in a lot of our file drivers in that way. When we call that method, it will always work. Remember, we're building an abstract class. So an abstract class, I'm sure you guys are familiar, but just to recap, an abstract class contains a lot of information. It actually contains kind of the very basic implementation of the class. And though it is not able to be instantiated because it's abstract, it can contain code. And that's the nice thing about an abstract class is that it can contain a lot of pre-written code that if the user does not override, it just simply runs that code, like in the case of our validate source. If the user does not want to validate the source and they don't implement the validate source, it will simply return true and we are good to go. So that's a nice thing with the abstract class. In my case for file driver, I do want to implement this validate source. So let me go back here and write a new protected function, validate source. And of course, this one will override that source. So what I want to do is I want to check that in our file driver, we can truly run this command, as in we can reach the correct path. We need to make sure that the path that was given to us through our configuration file is a real directory and we're able to fetch it. So let's do that check here and validate source. So let's start with an if statement here. So if, and what are we checking? Well, we want to check that it exists. If, we're going to reach out for our file facade one more time, exists. Notice that I negated this if statement, which means that it will actually check if file does not exist. And then we're going to reach into our new config and path, right? So what we're looking for is this path right here, right? We want to make sure that this blocks directory exists. So what do we want to do if it does not exist? Easiest way to cancel this whole thing and get back to basics is we're going to throw an exception. Right? We want to throw an exception and you can throw any exception. I'm actually going to write a nice custom exception to write a nice message for this. So let's add that one in right now. In my sources directory, I'm going to add a new directory called exceptions. And inside exceptions, we're going to add a new PHP class file driver directory nat found exception. A little verbose, but I think it really delivers the message. Our file driver is not able to find the directory specified. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. This will extend an exception. Go ahead and import that just to clean it up. And then the body, we're not going to actually do anything. So what we're going to do here now, back in my file driver, we're going to throw a new file driver exception. And what's the message that we're going to give it? Directory at, and then let's put that, this, config path, concatenate, does not exist. Check the directory path in the config file. So again, thinking about the user experience, we want them to be able to know what, what it is that we're asking them to fix. I'm going to go ahead and separate this into two lines just for cleanliness. Here we go. So directory at, and then it will spit out the path that the user provided, does not exist. Check the directory path in the config file. Back in my process command, right now we are running through this and at no point are we actually catching any exceptions or anything like that with it. So I'm actually going to grab this and I'm going to wrap it in a try catch block. So try to do that. And for now, I'm just going to catch every exception. In the future, we may decide we don't want to do that. We want to actually handle each one individually. I'm just going to catch everything and I'm going to spit it out. So this error that weighs in nice and red, and I'm simply going to get message, right? Every exception has got a get message method that you can call. And the get message method that is going to get passed in 
is, in our case, the message we just wrote. This one, the directory, right? That's the message that's going to get sent in. All right, so to test this out, back in my terminal, I'm going to actually remove my configuration file. Remember that I modified my configuration file in my package. So my dummy project, I got to go ahead and delete that now and republish that asset. So remove that. PHP artisan vendor publish dash dash tag press dash config. I'm going to vim into that new configuration file because we do know that the directory that comes with does exist. So we actually need to modify this. We're going to say, I'm just going to put a two on there. Perfect. Okay, let's run our command again. PHP artisan press process. And there we are. Directory at blogs2 does not exist. Check the directory path in the config file. Okay, so far so good. Now one thing that we haven't tackled yet is this identifier. So every driver that we have will sort of tackle this identifier differently. In the case of the file driver, the idea is that the file name will become the identifier. That way, every time we reprocess all of the blog posts, it can identify that as a change as opposed to a new blog post. So let's handle that right now. To be able to do that, I kind of have to have some sort of hookup method that I can actually hook into this press file parser array and go in and actually change the identifier, right? Because the array that's coming back from press file parser, we are simply going to go ahead and dump that back into this post variable. And at no point can I hook into it. So to be able to hook up into it, I'm going to make a method that will intercept this call right here. So I'm going to delete that for now. I'm going to call a new method that doesn't exist yet that is going to be parse. Now parse will take two parameters. The first one is going to be the file path and the second one is going to be the identifier. So in path file, we know that file path will be file get path name. And as a second argument, like I said, is whatever string we're going to use as an identifier. So in my case, I want the file name and we can get the file name by reaching back into file and get file name. It's a nice method for that. So we'll have the path and then we'll have the file name that we're going to use for identifier. Let's go ahead and do this parse method now. I'm going to put this in my abstract class. Let's put that, let's see, probably down here. Protected function, parse. We know we're going to get content and we know we're going to get identifier. I'm going to bring back the code that we brought from file driver implementation and let's change it around a little bit. Obviously, file is not available here, so we're actually going to use content, right, which is being passed in. And so this at this point basically returns the same thing that we have up until this point. Now we know that we're going to have to save this to this post. Now let's go back to file driver and we actually don't need to save it here. We're going to save it in this parse method. We're going to directly save that to that post variable. So now we have a place that we can intercept that array. So in my driver, let's intercept that array now. What I want to do is use array merge. We've used this before. And the first array that I'm going to pass to array merge is going to be the resulting array of that call. And the second array, and we're going to set that to str slug identifier. And that's what got passed in. We're going to go ahead and array merge the results of our press file parser. And then we're going to add identifier. Now notice in the order here, so identifier is second, which means that it will override any potential identifier field that got set inside my press file parser. We may reconsider that later on, but for now, this will work. Back in my process command, instead of a random string, I actually can change this now to post identifier. And for the first time, we are actually using a proper identifier and not just some random string. Let's go back one more time to my file driver and scan through everything. Okay, we no longer need this, so let's clean that up. Uh, looks like we're still reaching into my config file. I can change that. And we're going to use this config that we know we have and call path on it. That's looking good. That's looking good. Now let me check my driver. Uh, Yep, it's all looking good there. Looks like we didn't import this class. Let's go ahead and import press file parser. And let's try to run the command and see what we get. 
Okay, so it looks slightly different because we're actually catching errors now, but rest assured that it is the exact same SQL that we had before. With the difference is that identifier, which is our very first field here, is now sample post MD. And if you remember, that is our one and only blog post example that we have inside that blogs directory. So that's working perfect. To wrap up this lesson, one final little piece that I want to take care of is this fetch posts. So in our process command, we are calling this fetch posts blindly, always assuming that it is there. So we need to lock that into our driver abstract class. Otherwise, the users will not be forced to implement that method when they extend this class. So how do we do that? Let's write a new abstract method here. Public abstract function fetch posts. And that's it. This forces our users to actually implement that fetches posts. We know that very different things will happen in each driver inside the fetch posts, but all we know is that we need to be able to call a fetch posts. So that will lock that in. If I was to change this method name here, you see that automatically PHP Storm will throw a warning like, hey, there's a declared abstract method that is not implemented fetch posts. And if not, it will give you a runtime error anyway. So that's a nice check for us. Let me undo that. And with that, we have a fully working file driver implementation. Great job.